So hi everyone, I thought I would do a follow-up video from my review on the Canon G7X Mark II that I did previously in the year. Um, on that video I got a lot of comments asking if I would do a video explaining a few how-tos and kind of what settings that I use on the camera. Um, so if you are considering buying this camera then I'd recommend watching that review first. And if you have just bought the camera then probably this video will be a bit more suited to you. So firstly we'll go through all the physical features of the camera. On the top there is the on-off switch, um, it basically turns it on and off. Then you've got the shutter release button which you hold halfway down to focus and then fully in to take the photo. Then you've got the zoom lever for zooming in and out. You can also use it to zoom in and out of images that you've already taken. Then you have the mode dial um, to switch between all the different modes such as video, manual, auto, aperture priority etc. Surrounding that mode dial is the exposure compensation dial which helps with very bright or very dark scenes. And then along from there you have the microphone and then you have the flash and the flash release button is just down the side which you pull down and then the flash pops out the top and you can push the flash back in by literally just pushing it back in. Um, then the opposite side to that is the Wi-Fi connectivity button which allows you to connect the camera to your phone so you can send photos to your phone from your camera really easily using the Camera Connect app. There's also a digital terminal above that with ports for a HDMI out and a USB 2. And then you've got the wrist strap, which is obviously very useful. You've got one of those wrist strap notches either side as well, so you can put it whichever side you want. On the front, you have the handy control ring, which you can customise depending on your preference. I think I've got it set to change the aperture. And then underneath the control ring is the step or continuous selection lever, which means when you turn the control ring, it'll move smoothly or in steps, depending on whichever one you want. And then on the bottom, there's the cover for the battery and the SD card, and also a tripod socket if you ever need that. On the back, there's the brilliant LCD touchscreen, which tilts and moves in various ways um, for selfie mode and whatever you really you want. It's also a touch screen which makes it really really easy to navigate through the menus and change any settings that you want. And then next to the screen there is the red record button for shooting video. Uh, you basically press that to record, press that to stop recording. The ring function button which you can assign a certain setting to. I think I've got it set to change the ND filter whether it's got an ND filter or not. Um, that button also acts as the delete button when you want to erase some photos that you've taken. Then below that is the control dial which allows you to easily look through your images, basically turning the wheel. Then there's several buttons for focus, information, single, high or low shooting. And then at the bottom is the playback button to look through your photos and your videos. And then the menu button which is basically obviously to go through the menu. So in the menu you can adjust various settings different recording modes when taking videos, you can shoot full manual if you want to change all the settings to suit you. The time lapse feature I've used a lot, um, there's a video on my channel, I think it's like 7 minutes long called Sunsets or something like that, um, and all those shots were filmed on this camera using the time lapse video mode, I'll link that in the description as well if you want to watch that. In the menu you can change the image quality such as RAW or JPEG or whatever you like. I usually shoot in RAW because you get the most information from your image and then it allows me to edit the photo that I, the way I want to in Lightroom afterwards. If you're just a beginner then JPEG's absolutely fine to use. You can change what information is on the display when shooting such as the grid to help you frame your shots. If you want to reverse the display or how long you want the image review to show for, you can change all that. The face ID settings would be useful to you if you would be doing a lot of vlogging and selfies and stuff so basically you can register your face into the camera and then it'll know to recognise you and keep you in focus which is, I think I have done that but I don't really use it, I don't really do many selfies to be honest but that would be handy if you are going to be doing a lot of videoing yourself. And then you can also set a certain function to the ring function button here on the side, there's a variety of things that you can choose for that. On the next page there's various focus settings that you can play around with and choose from such as focus peaking to show what's in focus in your shot and also image stabilisation settings to reduce the camera shake if that's needed. Next you have highlight tone priority which you may potentially use if you're shooting on a very bright sunny day. 
so you don't lose detail in the very highlighted areas of your image. Then you have one of the great, great things about this camera is the built-in ND filter, which can easily turn on or off. So basically it acts like a pair of sunglasses for your lens if you like. So if you're shooting in very bright and exposed conditions, you can put the ND filter on and it's just magic. <laughs> You have different white balance settings, um, then you have the picture style setting where you can choose between auto, standard, portrait, landscape, fine, detail, neutral, faithful, monochrome, etc. You can also create three profiles of your own and then change like the sharpness, the contrast, the saturation, etc, which is quite cool. Um, then you've got the self timer for taking selfies and self portraits or whatever you like. You can choose between 10 seconds, 2 seconds, or even custom time. If we move along the menu settings, you can choose what recording size you want for your videos, such as 50 frames per second, 25 frames per second HD, or full HD. I tend to shoot in full HD, 25 frames per second. That's just my preference. Um, then there's various settings you can turn on or off, such as the wind filter or the attenuator which basically suppresses sound distortion caused by loud noises like wind. The next part of the menu regards how the camera saves your images and this is also where you can format your SD card if you ever wanted to do that, which basically means wipe all the images off it. There is a setting called video system and you can choose between NTSC or PAL. The difference between the two is it's a bit complicated and I've tried googling it to understand it and I'm a little bit confused still to be honest but from what I gather, the difference between the two is like the transmission of the number of frames per second in the video. NTSC is mainly used in America and PAL in Europe. So I just use PAL because I'm in England. I don't know. I just use PAL, yeah. Also, depending on which you choose, you'll get different movie recording sizes. So in NTSC, you'll get these ones and then PAL, you'll get these ones. Then there's various settings regarding the battery life of the camera and the date and the time, what language you would like to choose, what units. You can also change to scene mode and choose from a few creative filters such as grainy black and white and high dynamic range etc um, which are quite fun to use. To send images from the camera to your phone you will need to download the Camera Connect app on your phone and then you'll need to open up the Wi-Fi setting and press the Wi-Fi symbol on the side of the camera. Then press on the phone icon if it's there. It'll probably be called like iPhone or Android or whatever. Um, and then on your phone choose the Wi-Fi network that is named Canon G7X Mark II or camera, Canon Camera or something like that. Then you want to open up the Camera Connect app and then you'll be able to import the images from the camera to your phone or use it to shoot remotely for selfies or whatever you like really. I use it to transfer photos between the two and it's really easy to do that. So the memory cards that are compatible with the G7X Mark II are SD memory cards, SDHC memory cards and SDXC memory cards. The official Canon battery that comes with the camera is a Canon NB13L. I also purchased a third party battery off Amazon as a spare, which has also worked fine. Um, I also use this Pixie Mini Manfrotto tripod, I think it was like 20 quid on Amazon, um, which is really good. And I've got this Amazon Basics case in the size medium, which was like £9 I think. Um, and it provides the camera with like good protection for carrying it around but at the same time keeps it small and portable so it still fits in my pocket and I'll link all them in the description if you want to check them out. So the last part of the video I'll just quickly go through what settings that I use when I'm out shooting with the Canon G7X Mark II. Um, I often shoot in aperture priority mode or AV or in manual mode it's probably 50-50 between these two really. Um, I have my control ring assigned to change the aperture. The aperture is basically how much light is let into the lens so I like to keep that as wide as possible usually so 1.8, 2.8. I like to use aperture priority mode because it basically means that I choose what aperture I would like and then the camera automatically changes all the other settings like the shutter speed and the ISO and things like that so it's quite easy. Alternatively when I'm using manual mode it allows me to choose like exactly what aperture should speed an ISO I would like for the situation that I'm shooting so you've got to think a little bit more but sometimes it's needed. 
Um, and when I'm shooting video, I use full HD 25 frames per second and I usually shoot in the neutral picture profile um, and on the camera it describes it as natural subdued colours good for image editing. So I usually just use that. I'll link the camera manual below as well that I found online when I was googling for this video. I would recommend reading through that as well if you've got if you've bought the camera and you're stuck on a specific thing. Um, that basically goes through everything, all the settings and everything like that. You might have also got a physical manual with the camera, I can't remember if I got one or not, um, but yeah. I hope this video has been useful to you if you have just bought the camera. Um, I hope it's explained a few little things because I did get a lot of comments of people asking just for like a basic walkthrough video. I just wanted to sort of go through the basics as if you just bought the camera and you wanted to know how to use it basically. 